You know, growing up watching anime, I'd always wonder how things would change and grow in the medium and eventually the community. What I wasn't so much expecting, however, was how my own journey through life would shape how I relate to the shows that I watch. Let me give you an example. As a kid, I saw myself mostly from the perspective of the main character in some way. I had a one-dimensional view of things as kids often do, but I did from time to time think about what kind of character I'd relate to later on in adulthood. Imagine my surprise when I realized that I'd unlocked the depressed, overworked, traumatized adult class. Hey, yo, so can I get like a re-roll or...? It's a fairly recent realization I made while observing Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen. Watching him spitefully and resentfully drag himself through life made me feel seen in a way that makes me feel a little bit concerned actually because... Dog... Same. I know I'm not alone in this either. The overworked salary man slash woman seems to be the emerging trope of the working class, and that uncomfortable truth has genuinely taught me a lot about myself. Anime gets a lot of, rightly deserved, criticism for offering delusional, sometimes distorted perceptions of reality that some consumers then confuse with the real world through sometimes unhealthy levels of escapism affecting their ability to socialize or more simply put, spawning cringy weeps. That being said, limiting the discussion only to the scope of these types of shows does a disservice to other shows that make an effort to spotlight the human condition in a more realistic and sometimes even case study-esque way to teach better lessons to their audiences. Ayo hey, dog, you can't be serious right now. Anyways, I bring all that up because Chainsaw Man seems to find itself in a really weird intersection between these two fairly newer emerging ideas in anime that really hit me from episode one on account of the fact that, damn, this boy like me for real. He just like me for real. Ah, ah, ah. Don't toss me a horny bear just yet. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this. A lot of people kind of miss what's going on with Denji's character, and that's not even a hot take as the manga readers are doing their manga reader thing. But as an anime only who's seen some things IRL, a lot of his behavior makes sense in a way that gives me a lot of uncomfortable flashbacks to times when I've had to keep it pushing through some harsher living conditions than what I got going on right now. I think it's safe to assume that most of us have experienced exclusion at one point or another in our lives, but there's another level of societal rejection beyond that which Denji represents that I don't think I've seen before in anime. I mean, there may be, but I highly doubt it. This boy built different. Look, the point I'm trying to make is that Denji doesn't want to be popular or special. He doesn't really dream of normal things that you or I would dream of. He dreams of basic human necessities like human contact or the ability to even dream of a normal life. It's almost like he's not looking at society from beyond a fence, but as if he were looking up at a city floating in the sky. His reality, his standard for normalcy, is on a completely different plane of existence from that of an average man or woman. And it's this aspect of his character that often makes him come off as weird or unconventional when compared to other protagonists, at least in my opinion so far. Actually, as it pertains to this scene, and others like it, it becomes really clear that old boy doesn't even truly understand just how traumatized he is or how maladjusted he's become due to the fact that he doesn't realize that what he's looking for isn't sexual gratification, but rather human contact and connection. Something Makima quickly notices and takes advantage of in order to further manipulate Denji as she has been since the moment they met. I swear to God, I don't trust this. What is she, woman? Is she even human? Look at these eyes. I do not trust this. I'm getting distracted. Look, let me break it down for you real quick. When you go through the kind of prolonged trauma that Denji deals with in his life, you adapt to your living conditions, like I mentioned earlier, in ways you might not expect. For example, he's no idiot, but he understands that letting the people around him believe that he is can help him survive. When or if you ever get out of a situation like that, even though you're obviously consciously aware of how your situation changes, those automatic thought processes you have regarding your assumptions about the world and that whole metaphorical box that your instincts find for your brain to hide in can take a much longer time to break out of. A really good indicator of this in Denji is his overall socialization level. 
We're frequently reminded through how Denji communicates and behaves with and around others that he hasn't quite adjusted to the fact that he doesn't live in abject poverty anymore. Despite getting the normal life he's wanted for so long, he doesn't seem to see the importance of, say, learning manners and kind of just acts as though he's got new owners to obey, except they give him so much more freedom and privilege than he's used to that it doesn't really seem to matter in the grand scheme. It's the contrast between where he's come from and where he is now that makes him feel free as opposed to obtaining actual freedom. It's hard to say that he even understands what freedom is at this point. This aspect of his character ends up being a pretty big reason why he and Hayakawa have a hard time getting along. Based off of Denji's dreams and aspirations, from a more normal perspective, anyone would see a guy like him as a convictionless clown. But knowing the context of his circumstances, it makes a bit more sense in a really depressing way why he'd be able to fight so viciously for something as trivial as the almighty Opai. This juxtaposition of perspectives is a really interesting thing to pay attention to moving forwards though because I think this is what's going to be the basis for a major aspect of Denji's transformation as a character. Like I said, I'm anime only, but based on my own experiences and what the show's given us so far, I'm anticipating that there's going to be a point where Denji gets it. And it's probably going to be one of the most emotional climaxes of the series, if I'm right. To explain why that is, I'm gonna have to switch gears real quick and talk about one of my favorite pieces of media of all time, let alone anime, Odd Taxi. I remember watching this show and having an amazing time right up until the final episode of this series. There's a ton of mysteries that I really don't need to go into for the purposes of this video, but essentially in the final episode we get a backstory to a character we've had questions about since literally the first episode, and something I did not expect happened. I started bawling my eyes out. Like, I'm talking straight up inconsolable. I'm pretty in touch with my emotions, but this was something completely different. Weird thing to admit on the internet, I know, but I am going somewhere with this, I promise. Looking at this particular character's backstory allowed me to look at a somewhat similar situation to my own from the perspective of an outsider for the very first time, and it threw me. I was able to see through the events on screen situations similar to what I'd encountered growing up that I had considered normal and it shattered everything I thought I'd known about myself, my past, everything really. It literally made me recontextualize my entire life up until that moment and in a split second I saw life in a radically different light. I'm not one to insert myself into the main character's position anymore, but based on how unflinchingly this series addresses a lot of today's societal acceptances, I'm looking right at you, gun devil, I think this is exactly the type of discussion into humanity that this series is going for. In fact, we get a little glimpse of this in episode 5. After Denji achieves his dream, his brain completely melts once he realizes that what he was chasing after all this time wasn't all that spectacular in the first place. His despondency is played up as comic relief, but he's genuinely lost here and is desperate to fill the void somehow. I think this pattern of Denji's life experiences adding more and more layers of complexity to his dream and his perception of life is eventually going to bring him to a moment of awakening similar to how that one episode of Odd Taxi got my perspective on my own life to shift. And I also anticipate that it will hit him and us like a hammer when it does. I think I am now beginning to get it to a certain extent when people who have read this series say that Chainsaw Man has the potential to shift the trajectory of anime and manga writing as a whole. That's just how different this story feels. For all the spectacle and the breathtaking visuals this series has to offer, all the plot twists and insane moments of horror that are sure to await us this season, something tells me that it's how Denji and the rest of the cast will be put through the apparent meat grinder this world is that'll really change the game. And I'm very, very morbidly curious to see where this is all going to go because I know it ain't gonna be sweet. With that said, these are just my initial thoughts, and despite how bold my predictions may be, I'm fully aware that this series can and will go in directions I'm absolutely not prepared for. So what about you guys? 
This has been 2022's most anticipated series, so I'm excited to know what you guys think of the first few episodes down in the comments. And while you're down there, I'd love it if you'd be so kind as to give me a like and a sub if you like the video and want to see more. As always, thanks for watching. Peace.